Today's video, we have perhaps one of the most important episodes of Coffee and Crypto to date because, my friends, we have a 55, 60, 65, 70 percent, depending on how you measure it, massive black. Wednesday? Black Wednesday sale going on on Bitcoin and cryptos, guys. Bitcoin pulled back to $30,000 this morning. Ethereum pulled back below $2,000. Cardano pulled all the way down to $1.01. And we're going to be talking about all of that and more in this stream. And we're also going to be talking about emotion in cryptocurrency. We're going to be talking about how we can handle those emotions and how we can use them to our advantage so that we can make a lot of money in this space. Guys, this is going to be a fun stream. There might be a lot of fun in the space, but we are going to spend the next hour having some fun. We're going to do some technical analysis. We're going to look into the future and we are going to get hyped because I am here to tell you that this is the biggest opportunity for Bitcoin and cryptocurrency purchasing that we have seen this entire year. I am joined as always by my co-host and your president, Kinda Crypto Tim. You've been promoted. How you I've doing? been promoted? He's been Whoa! promoted. No! He got promoted. How about that? Well, you, nice. you should have let me know he's so I could change the awesome. word that's, that's, that's bigger than nine touchdowns. Yeah, so Kinda Crypto opinion. Tim. He's so, getting there. He's yeah. getting there. Kinda Crypto. Tim. Good cool. deal. How you doing? You doing good? I'm, dude, I am doing great. Tim, I heard that you're I just not going to pay rent this month, right? No, well, I, I was telling them before the stream. <laughs> I don't think I'm to the place where I'm like, oh, take a second mortgage on your house, sell all your... But I am kind of on the boat of like, hey, uh, uh, Taylor, we might be eating ramen noodles for the next couple weeks so we can afford <laughs> to buy it. Because uh, it's going to be good. Ah, the rent can wait. We got to buy some Bitcoin, guys. No, I oh, literally... What? Yeah, I have a new hat. A, Someone mentioned... Yeah, oh, I yeah, told you, you guys it was coming. I new knew hat. something was different. I, uh, this. Okay. I was tired of people misplacing Hurley... And, Apologies to Hurley for being <laughs> roped into XRP. Oh my That's, gosh. I'm Guys, sorry. I literally just walked out of the office and we have a couple of our employees out there and I went and I just said deadpan, Bitcoin just hit five thousand dollars and they both freaked out. I'm like, no no no, I'm kidding. And then <laughs> Caleb lost. He's oh like, Yeah, God. that man just got us. We are joined also, as always, by our producer, your one and only Smangatang. How you doing, Smangatang? Hey listen everybody, I need to tell you some Smash like it's gonna be okay. Everything's gonna be okay, guys. And everything's gonna be okay. Just hold. Hold for me. Thank you. There you go. Guys, this is going to be a fun stream. There is a lot of fear in the space right now, so I want you to be able to treat this day as a sanctuary where you can come, have a little fun, and not worry about what's going on in crypto. We're going to be talking about some serious things, but we're going to be having fun today. Just a little bit of... Um, 
uh, announcements for this stream. We are going to be answering Super Chats, all of them, but we are going to push them later on in the stream so that we can answer them all in bulk. Any Super Chats that come through, Tim is going to be logging, yes. and we will answer them all together so that we don't get distracted from our main points. To clarify, and just so there's a, if, if you're asking a question about the topic that we're currently discussing, then we will answer the question. I'll try to get it into what Jeb's saying. Yeah. If it detracts or if it's just completely different, I don't want to disrupt the train of thought, but I will copy and paste those questions so at the end we will answer them. So rest assured, if you ask a question and we don't answer it immediately, it will be answered. So for example, I think this is on track with what we were just talking about. Okay. Victor... I sorry, Vasgard. I can pronounce the uh, the middle name. I don't know if I can get that. Uh, one. Is that is that? Yeah, he um, asked. Okay. Uh, I or he didn't ask. He said I bought the dip five times now. FFS. Oof. Uh, what is FFS? I don't. Know, that's... Uh, for frick's sake. For oh, frick's yeah. sake. Oh, for frick's that's... sake. For yeah. Frick Noodle's sake. That's Guys, true. we're going to talk about buying the dip, and we're going to talk about a lot more today's stream, but we're going to start with what I know you are all ready to see, some Bitcoin technical analysis. Let's go ahead and do this, guys. If we look on the Bitcoin chart, down on the minute Oof. chart, you can see that we are in a massive uptrend on Bitcoin. No, I'm just kidding. We are up 16% in the last 24 minutes, just to be clear, so don't get too worried about everything. But here is what you are here for. If we look on the hourly chart, the last little while on Bitcoin has been very, very bearish. In fact, we pulled all the way down from $40,000 to $30,000. And by the way, no, that is not your screen lagging. That is TradingView wanting to be uh, taking its sweet time, but that's okay. Either way, we can see that just yesterday, Bitcoin was trading at $45,000. In 48 hours or less, we pulled back 34%. And exactly according to this chart, 26 hours. That is a percentage and a half an hour. And in just the last hour, we corrected $10,000. To my knowledge, that is the fastest, largest correction in the history of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. Guys, we have to start with the facts and then we can layer on what we think about it. But we can't be denying that this is a gigantic crash. Now, we have some interpretations about what this means and whether or not we should be scared of this. But we do have to admit and acknowledge that a major correction has just happened. We saw on Ethereum that Ethereum corrected and pulled all the way down to just below $2,000. I don't know why TradingView is being so laggy right now, but I can tell you Ethereum pulled down to, I think, about $1,950 and Cardano pulled all the way down to a dollar and one cent. Here's the thing, guys. The people that bought that dip are already up 20%. There are people right now on exchanges like Bybit, which we have an affiliate link for down below, that just made hundreds of thousands of dollars because they bought that dip. I want you to be thinking like them because the people that made money in this dip are the ones that did not look at this as a threat. They looked at it as a buying opportunity. So let's go back to full screen and I want to tell you a story. We're going to do some more technical analysis here in a second, but quite frankly, technical analysis on a chart like this is a little bit redundant because the market moved so quickly, all the indicators just got reset. So we're going to have to give a couple days for them to cool down. In 2008, <clears throat> a lot of people lost a lot of money. I was eight years old at the time. My dad was in construction for 30 years. He might even be watching the stream. Shout out to dad if he's watching this. It knocked our legs out from under us, and it had ripple effects for the next 10 years on my childhood. A lot of people lost a lot of money in 2008. But the interesting thing about 2008 is that more millionaires and more billionaires were created in that year than any other year this decade, uh, any other year that decade, excuse me. You know how many people made life-changing amounts of money in 2008? And the reason that they did was because the market had just crashed. It wasn't in spite of the market crashing. It was because the market had just crashed. You might be thinking, Jeb, what in the world? How do you make money when the market is crashing? Well, first of all, you're able to short. That's one thing that you can do. If you've ever watched The Big Short, then you will know about the billions of dollars that got made doing that. But what you have to understand is this. When a crash happens, think about it as if you're playing chess and somebody just flipped the freaking board and nobody remembers where any of the pieces go. They flip the board up in the air and all the pieces start landing where they may. The board just got reset. The, the playing field just got leveled. And now all of a sudden, everybody is on an equal playing field with equal opportunity. And it's one of the most opportune, rich times during a major correction like this. You know how much money was made on this correction just now in the last half an hour was probably billions of dollars. Yes, a lot of money was lost, but we have to look at the opportunity because guys, I want to give you some advice. You have to understand how to frame your emotions in this space. Let me tell you something. It's very easy to be scared right now. And if you are scared, tell us in chat. Say it. My dad always told me this. He said, Jeb, you scared, say you scared. Like whenever we'd be wrestling or something, he'd be like, say, you scared, say you scared. Just say it. The first thing you have to do to overcome fear 
is to admit that you're scared in the first place. It doesn't make you a, it doesn't make you any less of a man or any less of a woman to admit you're scared. It doesn't make you weak. It doesn't make you a baby. It is a valid, real emotion. And don't let anyone take that away from you. It is okay to be scared right now. Believe me. There's a lot of fear in this space, and that is okay. But the thing that makes us uniquely human, and it talks about it in the first habit of Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey in a, in a chapter called Be Proactive, it talks about the very thing that makes us human. The very thing that makes us human is our ability to, between stimulus and response, between emotion and reaction, we have the ability to make a choice. We have free will. The very thing that makes us human in the first place is that in between stimulus, something happening to us, like Bitcoin crashing, and in our response, like freaking out, we have a choice. We can have that emotion come into our mind that says, oh my gosh, freak out, lose, uh, run for the hills. Yeah. We have the ability to say, no, actually, I'm, I'm not going to respond that way. I might be feeling that, but I'm in charge. So I encourage you guys, even as we move into the stream, and even as we have a lot of fun today, just remember, you have total control over your emotions, and you do, as a human being made by God, have the ability to choose how you're going to look at this correction and look at it either as an opportunity or a disaster. But just know, the way you look at it will dictate how the next few months go for you. Because right now, there's a lot of opportunity, and I don't want you guys to miss it. Let's take a look at chat. What do we got going on, Tim? Looking at a lot of people. So, you know, when you asked if they were scared, not scared, saw a lot of mixed. And I, I think uh, it's you know, like Jeb said, it's perfectly reasonable to be scared. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, the the thought you're, you're not a healthy person if the thought didn't cross your brain. Oh, crap. You know, yeah, it's got to come into your brain. If you're not, there might be a chance you're uh, I don't even know. Like, but at the end of the day, what what you need to be consoled by and 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 reassured by as jeb said so jeb's been in here how many years three and almost four now almost four years he's seen this happen several times four if you look and two at months. other experts other technical analysis experts other crypto experts mm -hmm. they they're literally saying guys this is what we were saying look yep. at peter brandt mm -hmm. peter brandt the reason why he's sitting very happy right now is he said a month ago i put a buy-in order at 30 or not i might not have a whole month ago but two or three weeks ago i put a buy-in order at 32 500 he got in early because it didn't matter whether the thing crashed or not he set that up a long time ago. Mm -hmm. He knew this was coming. Sean Culkin, the football player who just announced uh, two or three weeks ago that he is going to be taking his entire salary in Bitcoin, he put on Twitter this morning, he's like, listen, guys, I told you I'm not buying to the 30s. Bitcoin maximalists, meaning people who love Bitcoin and see its future, are all sitting here saying this is exactly what we thought it would do. This is amazing. This is what we called. Get ready for it to rally. So yep. why am I not scared, Tim? Now, sort of crypto, Tim. Kind of crypto, 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 kind of crypto, Tim. Kind, okay. kind of crypto, I mean, Tim. You know, kind of. It's alliterative. We got to stick with that. But I've only been in. I've only been in crypto. Like I bought Bitcoin last August. Mm -hmm. I've been following crypto since January, but I'm watching these people who are way wiser than me. Let seeing them keep their head. And you know what? A sign of someone who's growing in wisdom is is when they watch people who are smarter than them. And they mimic those people. Yep. And so the other thing, you know, I woke up this morning thinking, I was explaining to uh, Caleb earlier this morning, I was like, here's the thought that I have right now in my head. Guess what happened? Last night, as that price crashed, I didn't lose any US dollars. Nope. I also did not lose any Bitcoin. I did not lose any Ethereum. I did not lose any Cardano. The amount of Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, the amount of US dollars that I have to my name stayed the exact same. Now, maybe the value shifted a little bit. But I didn't lose anything. And guess what? Right now, while Bitcoin's only worth $35,000, in the future, it's going to be worth, I believe, in the millions. And guess what? I didn't cost myself a single dime. Nothing happened to me. So I'm looking at the long-term future of this and saying, guys, I'm sitting pretty. If yep. anything, like I said earlier, might need to be eating some ramen noodles so that I can uh, yeah. get a little bit more. Yeah, guys, I have a video coming out later on today that I recorded in my car on the way to work because I really feel that there is a massive opportunity here. And I don't want those emotions, which are very valid, to get in the way of you being able to take advantage of this. Guys, sometimes there are travesties that happen in the world and there's no upside. There's no silver lining. You can try and figure out one, but there just isn't. It just sucks. When an earthquake hits a town, it just sucks. You know, there there are bad things that happen in this world, and it would be unwise for us to deny that. But when bad things happen in markets, they present more opportunities than downsides. Let me ask you a question. If you bought a home in 2006, right before the top of the housing market in 2008, and you are still holding that home today, are you in profit? Yes. More than likely, you have a higher value home today than you did if you bought in 2006, even though the 2008 financial crisis happened, simply because you didn't sell. 
If you sold the bottom, then yeah, you lost your money. That's called realization of profit or losses. If you want the technical term, it's called realization. Realization is when you liquidate an asset. Liquidate means you sell. When you get out of an asset, you sell it back into your native currency and you realize the profit or loss. If you guys sold right now, then yeah, you lost money. But, you know, the price is still low. You got an opportunity. If you have not bought in yet... I would encourage you to think about that. I'm not going to tell you to, because quite frankly, the technical analysis is all over Kingdom Come right now. God only knows where we're going next. But the fact of the matter is, the future of Bitcoin looks bright. Here's the thing. And tell me this in chat. Has anything actually changed? Yes or no? I just want to see yeses or nos in chat for the next 20 or 30 seconds. Did anything fundamentally change on Bitcoin? Yes or no? We're going to talk about China. We're going to talk about India. We're going to talk about tech stocks. We're going to talk about US dollars. We're going to talk about all that in a second. But we got to lay the foundation of this entire stream philosophically. Did anything actually change or did the price just go down? I want you to think about that. Did anything change? Did Bitcoin have a 51% attack? Did it get banned in the United States or in another major power playing country? Did anything fundamentally happen that changes the ability for Bitcoin to grow into the future? And by the way, even if something did, is there any way that it could be reversed? That's enough no's and yeses. I see enough. There's 90% of you guys saying no. So let's remember that as we move forward here. Just because Bitcoin's price has gone down does not mean that the underlying intrinsic value of Bitcoin has changed in the slightest. If anything, it has only gotten better because I can guarantee you one thing, and that is this. Institutions and corporations who see that Bitcoin just crashed like this, but also are smart enough to understand its value proposition are buying the dip. And if you are a smart investor, you will be doing the same. I have a couple of articles here that I want to bring to your attention. So let's go ahead and jump onto my screen. This is from Cointelegraph. It says, Stocks, China, and the dollar. Three reasons why Bitcoin's price is tanking below $40,000. It is absolutely true that we want to control our emotions, but it is also wise of us to try and figure out why is this happening and be informed on the information in the space. So let's do it. Number one here. The U.S. dollar bounces off of multi-month lows. And this is a bit of a can of worms to unpack. So this is going to take a second, but bear with me because this is very important. Tesla CEO Elon Musk bashing Bitcoin's energy consumption is the narrative of the moment everywhere. But some classic hurdles to fresh price gains have also been back this week. Among them is the strength, allegedly, of the U.S. dollar, which is attempting to stage something of a comeback after a losing streak that began in late March. At the time of writing, the U.S. dollar currency index, the DXY, DXY is a ticker symbol that you ought to be following, by the way, it measures the, uh, the strength of the U.S. dollar, which indicates the U.S. dollar's strength against a basket of trading partner currencies has bounced off of long-term support to reverse its downtrend. DXY inversely correlates with Bitcoin, and together with limp stocks, the conditions are right for tripping up bulls' progress. Let's go to full screen and discuss that briefly, because like I said, there's a whole can of worms to unpack there. Here's the thing. What it just said about the U.S. dollar being inversely correlated with Bitcoin is very important, and it points to something deeper. Bitcoin was designed to fix a problem core to the U.S. dollar and every single other government fiat currency in the world at this moment in history. Every single currency on the planet that is government issued is a fiat currency. What does that mean? For anyone new here, a fiat currency is a currency that is backed by nothing but the good word of a government. That is not sound economic policy. And you can study history the way that I have. I've done a lot of study on this, guys. I've studied the Roman Empire. I've studied um, Israel went through this. I've studied Polynesia. North America went through this. Britain went through this. West Africa went through this. Ethiopia went through this. So many societies throughout history have built currencies on the back of nothing. And what I mean by nothing is that they did not have a limited supply to back them, such as gold. And when they did that, the entire economy fell apart. A lot of people think that the Roman Empire crashed and burned because of invaders from the north. But that's not it. That was the nail in the coffin to an economic crisis that had been going on for 200 years. The emperors started clipping coins and they started debasing their own currency to fund public works projects. Sound familiar? And then by doing so, they led to the undermining of the underpinning of their economy, which was their currency. And the whole thing fell apart because it was a house of cards. They built their currency on a house of cards. And if your, if your currency is built on a house of cards, your economy is built on your currency, then your entire empire is built on nothing. And that is what modern empires like America and the rest of the free world are built on right now. The rest of the world in general are built on right now. They're built on nothing. So when the U.S. dollar does well, 
well, then Bitcoin naturally isn't going to do as well because Bitcoin is designed to fix the problem that the US dollar has along with other currencies. When the US dollar isn't doing very well, Bitcoin is naturally going to do well because of that. You might be wondering, Jeb, how does this tie into our current crash? This is how. When Bitcoin crashes, does that change the strength of the US dollar? Nope. Not one bit. Zero. When Bitcoin crashes, it does not change at all the magnitude of the problem that Bitcoin is attempting to solve. So if the price is crashing and the problem's the same and Bitcoin is a capitalistic endeavor, it is a solution to a problem. That's all capitalism is. It's people coming up with solutions to problems. If the problem's the same size and the price just went down, what does that mean? It means we got farther away from the maximum value that Bitcoin can reach in, the, in eventuality. And then we are going to be able to rally farther to that. It's very important you understand that. Let's go back to my screen and let's talk about this too, because there are some tech stocks that are in trouble, it says here. Elsewhere in the macro picture, tech stocks are suffering, and that's also something that tends not to bode well for Bitcoin. Following a curious report by Reuters about China allegedly banning Bitcoin, uh, banning further aspects of cryptocurrency commerce, stocks began to come under pressure. As Cointelegraph and many others noted, nothing new has come from Beijing, as trade associations have sought only to reiterate existing restrictions. I talked about China on ATB yesterday. Make sure to go back and watch that if you'd like some more information on that. Among the equity losers, however, was MicroStrategy, the corporate Bitcoin whale, which lost 5.2% on the day. The route also afflicted Tesla in a somewhat ironic postul uh, post postlude to Musk's Bitcoin criticism. In addition to being re uh, relegated to the world's third richest man, Musk has presided over Tesla Bitcoin gains have almost entirely disappeared. Here's the thing, guys. Bitcoin tends to be correlated with tech stocks. They're going down, so it kind of creates this perfect storm right now. But remember, this perfect storm that we're talking about is only temporary. And third and finally, classic FUD. There may be light at the end of the tunnel. A, tra a curious tradition shows up after a China scare. Crypto markets tend to produce huge rallies. This is very important. I'm going to leave it there for that article, but I'm going to go back to the Bitcoin chart. We were looking at this right before we started the stream. I got into the cryptocurrency space on July 31st, 2017. I'll go ahead and mark that on the chart right here. This right here is the day that I got into Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. If you look at the history of Bitcoin, I've been here a while. I remember during early September of 2017, right in here, I was in high school, by the way, Hurricane Irma came through Florida and I was sitting in my house, we didn't have power for a week, but I was on my phone and I could see that China was trying to ban Bitcoin again for the 20 millionth time that year. Whenever China does that, generally speaking, the cryptocurrency markets go into a giant rally soon thereafter. It's just something that happens. And remember, guys, analysis is a form of trend recognition. If you're seeing a trend, then that indicates that that trend might continue. This is something we've seen happen before where we have FUD coming out of China and then within a couple of weeks the market is rallying to new all-time highs and I have a theory that something like that might be happening pretty soon. I don't want you guys to get scared of this. The whole point of the stream is to remind you that there's opportunity in the correction. Anyway, let's go ahead and read chat for a little bit. What's going yeah, on over so, there, Tim? Yes, we are <laughs> We're going to talk about that. A lot of people asking. And I think how I people bet. getting mad. Just so you guys know, the reason I didn't interrupt his train of thought is because what he was saying was so important. I wanted him to get that out. But Right now, people are going ballistic because it looks as though, at least from what I've seen, uh, Coinbase isn't working. Yep. Binance isn't working. Yeah, I was about to talk about Just that. Just so you guys know, I don't know if anyone has it. Remember when I had to buy the Dogecoin because of my sayings? Those of you who are new, I had to buy Dogecoin because I... Uh, long story. I'll talk about it <laughs> later in, 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 at the end. Smash a like. However, I was able to purchase on eToro. So if you have access to eToro, I'm telling you right now, I just put a buy-in order at 34 a thousand and it it's good. So How's Bybit doing? Uh, I don't know. I, I I don't have Bybit. Uh, it's something I've been I wanted to get a hold of. I just haven't got around to doing mm -hmm. it at the moment. I just use Coinbase and Etoro at the moment, uh, but I plan on going other channels as well. But if you have access to Etoro, I don't know if you could sign up for Etoro right now. That that might be a little too much to ask. But if you have access <laughs> to it already, uh, that's working. But Jeb, what are your thoughts on these exchanges? Because I think there's a lot of speculation yeah. in chat. Yeah. That. So I know where this is going. I haven't seen this in chat, but I have a feeling this is a common trend that a lot of people are saying. A lot of people are probably going to jump on the bandwagon of saying, oh, these exchanges are trying to manipulate the market. These exchanges are trying to crash the price so they can buy Bitcoin. Why would they do that? Coinbase is already one of the largest holders of Bitcoin in the entire cryptocurrency space. They don't need to load up their bags anymore. If anything, they might want to take profit so they can fund their operations. Coinbase is not trying to manipulate the price down just for anybody worried about that. Coinbase being down probably has to do with a massive influx of people. What uh, For any of my web developers, I need you here for a second. Please show up in chat. Give me a one and tell me. 
Is it possible that their servers just got overloaded because everybody tried to log on all at once? Guys, I don't see this as manipulation. Yes, the servers are down on a lot of these exchanges, and that is really sad, but it might actually be a good thing for you because a lot of people that are trying to log on to exchanges right now are trying to panic sell. Now, luckily, most of the people here watching this, I'm sure, are trying to buy the dip, but a lot of people trying to log on to exchanges are simply trying to sell. And mm -hmm. you might see these exchanges going down as something like a circuit breaker that happens in the stock market that halts trading so that people don't do things that they will regret, like selling when Bitcoin's down 50%. Guys, this is a discount. You don't go and get... Let me put it this way. Let's say you walk into Walmart and your favorite television that you've been looking at for the last for the last year is an 85 inch OLED television. It's got like all those it's got all those revolving pictures of like chimpanzees in Africa and all this stuff going on on it. And they're like showing off all the colors and everything. And you walk up to it and you see, oh, it's 50 percent off. Do you sit there and complain saying, oh, no, my television is worth less than it was a month ago? No, you buy the freaking television because you owe it to yourself. After all the work you've done in cryptocurrency, you don't get mad because there's a discount. And in the same way, we can't let our fear dictate what we do, guys. You have agency as a human being to control what you do with those emotions that are coming into your head. So, no, I don't think this is manipulation, but I do think that you should hit that like button. See what I did there? Yeah. Smash like. Let's see if we can um, get to 1,000. So, just a follow-up question that the, uh, like... There's still the fact that you also can't buy. Yeah, no, that's and that's true. That's what I was saying. And that is unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm going to real quick, because we're on that. Go for it. Every single, every single quote. I mean, some of these aren't questions. I think these are statements. Uh, but I'm going to go through them so that I can take them off the list. Kyle Smith donated $5. Thank you, Kyle. He said CoinMarketCap and CoinGecko are also down. Unbelievable. LOL, though. Uh, so, I, you know, I don't know. I guess know. he thinks it's, not, it's funny. I don't, yeah. Yeah. I don't think it's that funny, but I, I see what you're saying there, Kyle. I mean, it's yeah. frustrating for it sure. It is frustrating, and don't get me wrong, it is. Dimitri Joustras, don't I don't even know what is CA five dollars. I don't I don't Canadian? know if I know what that is. Cana that's Canadian, okay, Canad. good. Cad, <laughs> it's Cad. Canadian dollars. Uh, people freak out because exchange crash. That's why the first thing is to invest money that you are willing to lose. Yes, Amen. yes. Amen. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. Looks like Bybit's up, according to chat. So if any of you guys are on Bybit, that's that's potential. Someone said, please ooh, talk ooh. about the fact that all exchanges are down. Nobody can buy the dip right now. What can we do? Yeah. Uh, so yes, we discussed that. Thank you for thank you for letting us know. Like I said I, I'm just keeping track of all of these. Uh, well, so. here, here's the thing that I want you guys to remember. We pulled back down. I'll use Bitcoin, for example, but it kind of the whole crypto market's following Bitcoin. So when I say Bitcoin, I mean everything. Bitcoin pulled down to thirty thousand dollars. Is sitting at thirty six thousand dollars right now. Bitcoin is. I'm hesitant to say this because it's uncharted territory. I would be surprised if it goes above $42,000 in the next couple of days. So even if you don't get this low of a dip, even if you don't get to buy the exact bottom like I know we all want to, yeah. you're still going to get a really good buy-in opportunity. Guys, I re let me put it this way. Because I have experience with this. You guys got to remember, I've been in the space for four years. I've been through this. The reason that I think this is not funny, but um, exciting is because I've seen it happen so many times. I remember when Ethereum pulled back in the COVID crash last year to $80. And then I was dragging my feet and I decided, you know what? I'm going to buy Ethereum at $160. And I bought it. And you know what I said to myself? I said, come on, Jeb, you bought too late. What are you doing? You missed the bottom. And then mm -hmm. Ethereum rallied to $4,000, and I stopped caring about my exact entry price because I made a lot of money. And I yeah. bought several Ethereum down there, and I was very happy I bought it, and I was very happy I didn't beat myself up and worry too much because I didn't catch the exact bottom. Guys, catching the exact bottom is, number one, dangerous, and number two, just not that important. Oh my gosh, so yeah. don't get too worried about it. You know, there there is a book. So I had everyone in the office uh, read the book Extreme Ownership. Yep. And mm -hmm. in that book, uh, Jocko Willings talks about how when you're in a battle, you cannot focus on every little wrong decision because yep. if you sit there in self-pity so and think about, so oh, good. I should have done that instead, so instead good. of thinking about what you should be doing next, you're going to find yourself in a hole. So just because you missed yep. the exact bottom, don't worry about it. As long as you hit a dip and as long as you eventually, in the long run, make more money than what you put in, then it's a success. Yeah, and guys, by the way, if you're enjoying today's stream, I really do encourage you to hit that like button. It helps out our channel quite a bit. And if you're resonating with what we're saying today, hit that subscribe button. We bring you guys this content every single day. If you're watching this for the first time, you might be watching it because, you know, Bitcoin just crashed or Ethereum's doing this and Cardano's doing that. I want you to know that what we stand for is integrity. We stand for humility and we stand for you. This channel is not about me. It's not about our team. It's not about our employees. It is about you.
Mm -hmm. It is our job not to make a bunch of money for ourselves, but to give you the abilities to make the most out of this space. And that is truly our heartbeat. If you walk into our office, we had a you, we had a follower named Lionel who might actually be in chat right now, come into our office yesterday. Shout out to Lionel. And, shout out to Lionel if he's here. He's in construction. He came in and he was like, wow, no, these guys, there's a lot going on behind the scenes. God, here's the thing. We take integrity very seriously. We take humility very seriously. And we take you very seriously. Yeah. It is our mission here to take back control of our destiny from those who stole it from us. That's our mission statement. Every good organization ought to have a mission statement. Our mission statement is to take back control of our destiny from those who stole it from us. And I'll tell you who stole your destiny, because it was stolen. The person that stole your destiny was the person that told you that you had to count on other people and told you that you couldn't do it yourself. That's the person that stole your destiny. And I am trying to help you realize that if you take your life into your own hands and you invest in yourself, you can have anything you've ever wanted. Let's go ahead and read a little bit of Super Chat. How about that? All right, let's do it. Let's, I mean, they got a lot to work through. So uh, Yes, indeed. What I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll to the top cool. just so we uh, cover that a little bit. Uh, and then we'll get through a couple of them, and then we'll go through. So Carlos Hernandez says, This is a 10-plus year investment. Days of becoming rich from, day one, from one day to another are over. Think smart and don't daydream. This is real life. I agree. This is a 10-year investment. It uh, is. This is think long-term. Uh, so thank you so much for that. Uh, Car Corey Bates, sorry, said, yo, guys, best crypto channel on YouTube. This message is for Shmay. How about them Celtics? Brooklyn, we coming. Yes, sir. <laughs> right. And guys, let me just say, let me just say, that goober yesterday saying that the Wizards were better <laughs> than the Celtics, who's laughing now? Oh, my God. Who's laughing now? That's going to be like Bitcoin. it's definitely not the Wizards. Yeah. The Wizards are crying That's right That's going to be like Bitcoin. Who's laughing now? The Bears? No. Someone just said in chat, by the way, RSI is at 22. We're going to jump back on the technicals in a second. Yes. Just so you know, RSI is at the lowest point that it's been at in a couple of years. So if you're looking for a dip to buy, I don't know. One might have just shown up. Probably the biggest one since March of last year. Anyway, let's keep going. Yep. Yeah, a couple more, and then we will go back to TA. So yes, we got indeed. Matt C. He said, Bitcoin below 40000 will look like a bargain in the long run. I'm going to continue DCA to DCA. Good. Yes. Good. Good job. Keep I think dollar Matt calls else. Uh, what I'll do is I'll do three more. Okay. So James says, Coinbase should have frozen trading if no one can even get in to make trades. Eh, well, if they if they freeze trading, the market's still going to move even without them. It's not like the stock market where if you freeze the market, the market stops like that. They would just move without them. So that yeah. unfortunately, that wouldn't work in crypto. But I get the point. Yeah. Uh, Bruce Wayne Jr. Uh, so Batman. Uh, Batman's Batman here. Jr. He said, I guess I'll donate to my boy since I can't make any buys on Coinbase. Bro. <laughs> just like GameStop, huh? Much love, fellas. Dang. Love you, Batman. Love you, man. Yee. Last one, tall blonde girl said TA on Cardano and Ethereum, please. That is the plan. Yes, indeed. Uh, unless we have to answer 157 uh, super chats. So. Hey, I ain't complaining because y'all <laughs> all sending money over here to help us make payroll while Bitcoin's Woo! crashing. True. Let's guys, see it. Help Thank you guys out. so much. Guys, all of your money goes to Smay's payroll. He has to, yes, be, he has yes, to be paid see. after all. Smay is, you know, Tim and I do this for free because we love you guys, but Smay, yeah. for some reason, Smay keeps asking for a paycheck. I don't know why. Yeah. Wait, well, I have medical debt. debt. What? There's pay? I there's have pa medical debt. There's pay? No, I have medical debt. <laughs> you think I don't have medical debt? I have some pretty... I don't have medical debt. I what the heck? Am I the only one in here? Oh my Hold God. on. Do you guys remember my tooth? <laughs> All right, my let's get back to it. Let's get back yeah. to it. All right. All right guys. Let's do it, guys. We are going to jump onto the Bitcoin chart, and there is quite a bit that I have to show you, so let's go ahead and start. <laughs> here is the thing, guys, and this is one of the pieces of analysis that I wanted to show you. As someone said in chat, and I've been planning on bringing this up, RSI just hit 21 and a half, 22. Notice this trend right here. High, lower high, lower high, lower high. Lower low, lower low, lower low, lower low. What is this? It's a clear RSI downtrend. But here's the thing. Downtrends have to end somewhere. Where do RSI downtrends end? They end below 30. Every time that RSI goes down here below 30, what happens? The RSI goes into a massive rally. Why does it do that? Because the price goes into a massive rally. Let me show you this. Here's a bottom. I'm just going to go ahead and draw these, and then I haven't even pre-analyzed this, but I'm banking on this because I've seen it happen before. Here are the last four times that Bitcoin went far below this level. What happened following? In this case, Bitcoin traded sideways, then went into a massive rally. If you bought down here, you wouldn't have lost a whole lot. You would have had to wait a little while, but you would have had a 350% return. Right over here, RSI bottomed out. Traded sideways, big rally. Traded sideways, big rally. Guess what happens over here when Bitcoin pulled back and we hit a uh, down on like 25 on the RSI. Gigantor rally that goes super far into the stratosphere. Guys, yes, you might have to wait a little while in these cases. Look, see how we had to wait a little while. I'm not saying that's going to happen tomorrow, but a major rally ensued. If you buy the dip when RSI hits this low, you're going to be glad you did. It's simple historical analysis, guys. Technical analysis 
is the art of looking at previous trends and using them to figure out what the market might do next. It's simply a matter of extrapolation based on previous data sets that we have. And guys, I don't want to pat myself on the back, so I'm only going to say this once. I'm not one of those YouTubers who says, ah, I called it, but I kind of do have to mention this because it does harken back to some analysis we did. Back over here in March, I did say in a video that there is a strong level of support at 42000 and we could potentially go there, and $30,000 might be the absolute bottom. I'm, I'm not... I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, but I kind of did say that, and a lot of people gave me flack. I'm saying this because you should trust me on this. I've been in the space for a long time. I know what I'm talking about. I am, at this point, an expert in cryptocurrency technical analysis. I've been doing this every day, and here's what I can tell you from that, author from that position of authority in this ecosystem. Bitcoin might not be done crashing. Bitcoin might go lower. Bitcoin might trade sideways for two months. Bitcoin very well may do all of that. What's going to happen in the long run is Bitcoin is going to set this as a new flat level of support, and we're going to rally. Let me put it this way. If we look back on the history of 2016-17 bull market in Bitcoin, right around the time I got into the space, I'll actually show you. This is the day right here that I got into crypto. There was a time where Bitcoin's all-time high was $3,000. Now our bottom is $30,000, and there's people joking that Bitcoin hits all-time low of $30,000. Notice what happened here. We set $3,000 as a level of resistance. Then we set it as a level of support. Okay, let's keep that in mind. What if we look at $20,000 here as our previous level of resistance, and then we just set $30,000 as a new level of support? Based on what happened over here, I think my camera's covering it up, but based on what happens over here, Bitcoin could pull all the way down to $20,000 and then go on to set massive new all-time high rallies and blow up out of the stratosphere to like $200,000. I don't even think even that is going to happen. If we remember our perspective, guys, we will be much more capable of controlling our emotions. Bitcoin setting $30,000 is what I assume is the absolute bottom of this correction, is a very healthy thing. It could go all the way down to $20,000 and it wouldn't scare me in the slightest. Now, if we start going down below that, I'd be like, okay, what's going on, Bitcoin? I'm kind of confused here. But quite frankly, this is there's nothing to be worried about. At the end of the day, guys, we need to look at the TD sequential because it has something to tell us. I told you guys this a couple of days ago. It was about to hit a nine flash, a bearish nine flash. And also, remember what I said yesterday? I said this candlestick right here, this inverted hammer, indicates that we're in the last third of a correction. It doesn't mean the correction is over, but it means we're in the last part of the correction. So we had a nine flash on TD sequential. We have a, a, an inverse hammer saying that we're in the last third of a correction. And now we just had a massive capitulation. All the weak hands have been shaken out. What a word. Everyone, Com what did you say that word again? Capitulation. Capitulation. What's the definition of that word? Capitulation is when people give up and they sell because they're fearful. Great word. Yes. Great you haven't word. heard that word before? Not a chance. Kind of crypto no. Tim is slowly turning into real crypto Tim. It's going to be great. Yeah. Bitcoin, the bears finally capitulated. Excuse me. The bulls finally capitulated. All the people with weak hands have finally capitulated. They finally sold their Bitcoin. And all those weak hands. I talked about earlier have finally been shaken out. So let's go back to full screen because I got to make one final point to you. Here is what it is. I've said this, guys. The entire market for the last six months has been built on FOMO. It's been built on a hype. It's been built on speculation, but it has not been built on fundamental and institutional buying pressure and adoption and real world metrics. It's been built on all of us getting super excited because, oh, Bitcoin or Dogecoin can make us millionaires. I've been harping on this for months because I care about you guys and I don't want you to lose money. But I finally get to change my tune on that. I finally get to change my opinion on that. I finally get to come on here and tell you Bitcoin no longer, at least for now, is built on hype and speculation. Now, Bitcoin's price is actually justified by its fundamentals. It's actually justified by the underlying intrinsic value that all of its on-chain indicators point towards. What that means is that where Bitcoin was overvalued and in a small bubble, and maybe not a small bubble when we're talking half a trillion dollars or a trillion dollars in all of cryptocurrency, that bubble is now popped. And what does that mean? That means we can start growing in a healthy manner. We went 250 days without any major corrections to shake out the weak hands. We didn't have any control burns, and now we have, and that is a very good thing. Let's see what chat's doing. Guys, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. This channel is here to give you top quality information and tell you not only what you want to know, but also what you need to know so that you can become successful in cryptocurrency. This channel is not about us. It is about you, so subscribe if you are interested in seeing more. Let's see what's going on in chat a little bit, Tim. And any points you guys want to make, feel free to weigh in. I'd love to hear them. Yes. Uh, so somebody, I'm talking with a, a Jay. He's asking. So he bought uh, Jay. I'm assuming what you're saying is you bought around two dollars to Cardano. 
and you're asking, is it, should you continue to hold, or should you go in and sell, Oof. cut your losses, should you buy more? Jeb, what is your response to that? Anyone who bought Cardano at $2, what would your advice be? Real to quick, what's your response, Tim? I would say, what do you? Uh, one of the questions I asked him was, how long are you willing to hold? Because if you believe in the long-term future of Cardano, which, it, like I do, I believe Cardano is going to be, I think $2 is so low for what Cardano will be long-term. So I, I think the highest I ever bought was like 160 something I haven't bought since then, but if I had bought at $2, I would just go and write it out and say, nope, I'm, I'm good. Like, first of all, a lot of what I'm doing now, I don't really trade that much. Uh, I buy to hold because I believe in the longevity. That's yep. why, with the exception of my Dogecoin purchases, which is for a punishment. Oh, my uh, gosh. The rest of my things, I, I told you guys earlier in the chat, if you guys were here, I literally said, last night with all that drop, I didn't lose any money, and I didn't lose any Cardano, and I didn't lose any Ethereum, and I didn't lose any Bitcoin. I'm fine. Yep. I'm sitting great. Guys, if you want to learn more about technical analysis, by the way, I highly encourage you to check out our program. It's called the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy. It's linked in the description box down below. Anyone who has gone through it, give us a one in chat if you think it's worthwhile. And by the way, if you want to learn technical analysis, it's the most, it's the best course in the cryptocurrency space to do so, guys. Mm -hmm. We have 36 videos, over 12 hours of high-quality content. I teach you everything from how to read candlesticks. I teach you technical indicators. I teach you, I teach you mindsets behind technical analysis. I teach you support and resistance. I take you through the very basics and all the way up through the more advanced concepts that you will need to become successful in cryptocurrency. It is my dream to make as many of you as possible successful and profitable in the cryptocurrency space. If you would like to go down that journey with me, and with all of the students that are saying one in chat right now, sign up for CT2A, CT2A with the link in the description box down below. And by yeah. the way, in case you'd like any testimonials, we actually have Google reviews now. So type in Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy over into Google. I think we have 16, 17 five-star reviews, and that's literally it. We only have five-star reviews out of all of them. Yeah. So make sure you sign up for that. It is definitely going to be worth your while, and we have a full 14-day money-back refund guarantee if you decide it is not for you. We are more than happy to honor that. But give it up. Oh my gosh, oh Smay's over here trying to kill my sales pitch. Come on, man. Before, I'm trying to make sure you get paid, Smay, because you're over here wanting money. I don't know why. Before before <laughs> we jump back in, because I think we're about to do uh, some Ethereum and T, uh, Cardano TA, because yep. obviously uh, Bitcoin was not the only one that crashed overnight. But uh, let's answer a couple super chats and get this out. Let's of do There's it. Still a lot of them. Uh, Matt C sa uh, again said, "What I have learned from all the people that have been in this a long time is that this is normal. This is a long game. Do not panic." Thank you, Matt C. Again, yep. a great, a great echo of something we just talked about. But that's you guys here. We're not the only ones saying that opinion. There's lots nope. of people with that. Opinion. Lots of people. Lots of experts. Uh, Boz says, "Boz fine." Bo Bo wow, my English. English. Buy bonfire. It is lit. Okay, it uh, is lit. Uh, I mean, that's by te definition, yes. Bonfires are lit. Bonfires uh, are lit. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's a thing. It's just people were spamming. Ah! Oh, no, the table. All right. Um, Australia's uh, uh, Australia's DP, I think. Uh, what if we wanted to jump out in six months? I'm not planning on holding more than a year. I mean, everyone's got to decide their own strategy. I mean, Jeb, you can chime in on that real quick, but everyone has to decide their own strategy. If you're not a long-term hodler yeah. and you're afraid, you know, it's up to you whenever you want to get out. I, I think it'd be a weird time to get out now. Yeah, it would be. <laughs> but it's up to you, you know? Yep. Um, Moose L says, in this market, is, I think is, is there an advantage to transferring Ethereum to Bitcoin? Good question. Jeb, what do you think? Oh, boy. Right now, I would be very careful about moving any kind of cryptocurrency anywhere. Let me put it this way. There's a hurricane overhead, and the last thing you want to do is go outside and try and put more boards up on your window. You kind of just got to let the thing pass at this point. We've entered the eye of the storm. Let it pass. I would not be yeah. trying to trade right now. There's not very much technical analysis other than the fact that we've just had a giant correction. We're probably going to go up or sideways. There's not much to really inform any kind of movements like that, so I'd be careful of that and wait till the storm passes before you start moving around cryptocurrencies. Good question, though. All right, we got two more, and then we'll go move back into the stream. Uh, Victor, again, this is Victor Vasgard, says, what do you think of XML? XML? Lumens. Well, Stellar XLM? Lumens. XLM? They say XML. Oh, it, they said XML. It, oh. Is XML different? XML. I don't know right, what XML. Don't, we, XML is a file for video stuff. I'm pretty sure they meant uh, I'm pretty XML sure they meant XLM. Yes. Pretty sure they meant XLM. To be honest with you, XLM Stellar Lumens is a very similar project to XRP. I'm not a big fan of it. There's a lot of updates that have gone on on it. Gone on on it. Yeah. Believe it or not, that was a real sentence. Gone on on it. Yeah, absolutely. For, for all of our uh, <laughs> not native English speakers, even those of us who only speak English, it's a hard language. Sometimes you still it, can't understand me, even if yeah. you know the language. Uh, Smay, I know you have an opinion on XLM. What do you think about it? Uh, my opinion on XLM is 
the same. It's just, I guess I can I can say it. So basically, guys, uh, I'll make this brief. If you uh, if you believe Bitcoin is, uh, which all of us here believe that Bitcoin is going to be the next currency that everyone's using, right? It's gonna eh, completely. Oh, okay. Hey God, give it it's gonna comp- you know it's gonna be the the currency that revolutionizes the banking system. XRP and uh, XLM are basically trying to do the same thing, which is be able to streamline the current banking process uh-huh. through blockchain technology. So while I think it is a good short term project, meaning that I can see it have a use. I don't think it's going to have a long-term application. So, guys, with that, we are going to go ahead and move on to Ethereum. So if we can jump onto my screen, I will show you some of the things that I am seeing here. This is another one of those I told you so moments. I kind of just have to say it to set the stage. I don't want to do it for ego's sake, but it is important. We talked about this rally getting overextended. We talked about nine flash showing up, and we got overextended here. And I talked about this uh, bearish engulfing candlestick. We talked about how the volume was kind of staying the same, but it was red, so it was backing up the trend. We talked about how we had broken the 20 exponential moving out. We talked about all this. Um, At the end of the day, guys, Ethereum right now is a very similar market to Bitcoin. It's going through a major correction. Except it hasn't been in that correction for quite as long. It's been correcting for seven days, where Bitcoin has been correcting for 30. But what we have just seen right here is a key pivotal moment in cryptocurrency. Sometimes what you'll see happen is a giant total market movement will come in where Bitcoin, Ethereum, Binance Coin, Cardano, Dogecoin, all of them dump. They all crash hard. And what that does is all of the cryptocurrencies that were out of sync with each other and they were phase shifted where one cryptocurrency was doing something one month and the same and a different cryptocurrency would do the same thing the next month and they were all kind of out of alignment. What happens is that this phase shift right here when a total crypto market event happens, they all get magnetically pulled together. So right now, yeah, Ethereum was probably about two or three weeks behind Bitcoin. This crash just pulled everything together like ma- like a magnet and forced everything to be the exactly the same. Mm-hmm. Right now, Bitcoin's chart and Ethereum's chart look almost identical. Bitcoin and Ethereum are almost are down from all-time high, almost an identical amount. 50% over here, uh, 55% over here on Bitcoin and 54% over here on Ethereum. They've both been pulled together. So right now, we're actually wanting to do analysis on Bitcoin, mainly because Bitcoin is essentially the market that most obviously shows that total market correction. Guys, there's not much I can really tell you on Ethereum other than its RSI hasn't pulled all the way down below 30. So potentially, there's a bigger correction in the cards for it. I will say this. It pulled all the way down to $2,000, which is a strong level of support, one that we've talked about here on the channel. The reason that we knew $2,000 was a strong level of support was because of this high over here and because 2K is a uh, great fa- uh, great video games company, but also because it is a uh, psychological level of support that people are going to pay attention to. It's a little over 50% retrace from all-time high. It makes sense that's the bottom. In the case of Bitcoin, I'd be surprised if it goes below 30 k In the case of Ethereum, it is possible that it goes below 2000 I would be surprised by it, though. And quite frankly, guys, there just isn't quite that much. um, There actually isn't quite that much analysis to do on Bitcoin right now. But, uh, excuse me, not on Bitcoin. I'm sorry, on Ethereum. But nevertheless, there's what I got. Like I said, it it lines up very uh, closely with Bitcoin. We're going to do XRP, not XRP, ADA here in a second. (laughs) But let's go ahead and try and catch up on some more of these super chats, if we will. Yeah, let's 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 do some some super chats. Guys, before before we do that, though, I just want to remind you, we have an affiliate for this channel. It's called Bybit, and the link's in the description box down below. And to my knowledge, it's one of the only exchanges that hasn't gone down during this correction. I might be wrong on that. If it did, hey, it happens. But Bybit is a fantastic cryptocurrency exchange. They have great customer service. They have a great user interface, very high liquidity and if you sign up with bybit with the link in the description box down below not only are you going to be getting access to a fantastic cryptocurrency exchange you're also going to be helping to support this channel for which we are eternally grateful we thank all of our affiliates down there it does help to support the operations of this business and of this youtube channel make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel and let's go ahead and read some super chats all right carl said woke up just in time to buy ethereum at 1975 also wanted to say i found this channel from bitboys all around Around the chain, you guys are awesome. Carl, you're awesome. That's a great. Thank you, Carl. To get that at 1975. You yeah, do. that's awesome, that guys. By the way, I'm going to be fun. on ATB twice a week from now on Tuesdays and Thursdays, so I'll be on there tomorrow also. Yeah, super, super googly said I am in HK and Binance is working fine. I'm scooping up quality all like no tomorrow and already up 20% in the last hour. Good for you. No. Good, good deal. Yeah, it's weird. like I said, a lot of opportunity in these corrections, guys. Yeah. Uh, dog, dog, a dog, Junior 
It says, hey guys, it's your friendly Aussie crypto noob. Quick question, mates. My girlfriend as is asking what one coin you might suggest right now in this sale. So I'm assuming what is the one coin you'd be buying right now? Jeb, I think I know the answer, but I'll let you say it. Yeah, let, let's let's all three of us say it together. One, two, three. Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Dogecoin. Oh say, my god. Say, say, no, 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 say, no, please, no. Uh. Uh, <laughs> one more, one more, and then we'll jump back and we will you just did Ethereum, so we'll do Cardano. We'll right? do Cardano, yep. All right. Kenneth Gardner says Coinbase Pro and Binance US are up. Just bought the dip. Good deal. All right. Sweet. There you go. Good deal, guys. We're going to jump onto some Cardano technical analysis. Quite frankly, it's going to be short because, like I said, all the markets are moving together. But I know you want to see it, so we're going to go ahead and do it. Let's jump onto my screen. Cardano has an all-time high that it set recently of $2.50. And this is actually the largest of the big three corrections that we have seen today. It pulled back 58% in four days faster and deeper than we've seen on Ethereum and Bitcoin, which is interesting because Cardano's price is one of the main cryptocurrencies that I think is not built on hype and speculation, but it has one of the deepest pullbacks. It's definitely interesting. Bitcoin pulled back a little over 50%. So did Ethereum. So did Cardano. Here's the thing, guys. Right now, there is a lot of volatility in this space. If you're looking to trade Cardano or Ethereum or Bitcoin, I would caution you to be careful because there is a ton of volatility right now, and it's not predictable volatility. It'd be one thing if the volatility was predictable. Right now, the volatility is relatively unpredictable. It's hard to tell where we're going to go from, from here. This is what I call a decision point in a market. This is where the market, uh, get everything gets thrown up in the air, and then we have to let the pieces fall where they may. Right now, it's very difficult to ascertain what happens next. Where do we go from here is hard to tell. But I can tell you this. I think the bottom for Cardano is in. I don't think it's a coincidence that it pulled down to a dollar and one cent because a dollar is a major level of support on Cardano. Technical analysis, even in these storms, turns out to be accurate. A dollar is where everyone had their buy orders in and the bull said, nope, we're not going any lower than that because if we buy that dip at a dollar, we are going to make bank. And so they have. Even those people that bought Cardano less than an hour ago are already up 32%. I want you guys to pay attention to the opportunity, not to the fear, because like I said, we as humans have the unique ability to dictate how we interpret our emotions, and that is what makes a good trader at the very core, is your ability to control your emotions and think with your head, not with your heart. Lee can see here that we broke the 20 exponential moving average on Cardano. We broke in the 20 exponential moving average on Ethereum. We broke in the 20 exponential moving average quite a while ago on Bitcoin. But here's the deal. And I'm going to go to full screen, and this will be one of my final points for the stream. And this is, this is where the title and the thumbnail of this stream comes from. This might be one of the best things that has ever happened to you as yeah. a cryptocurrency investor for two reasons. One, for your profits, but two, for you. Number one, and this is the simple one, and this is the one you're going to hear on every channel today, so I'll get this one out of the way quickly because you'll hear it all over YouTube for the next 48 hours. There's been a giant crash. You get to buy the dip, and you can make a lot of money. Duh, we've been talking about that all day. But here's the thing I really want to bring to your attention, and that is when Bitcoin goes through trouble, when Bitcoin goes through strife like this, it makes you stronger. You ever heard the song, What Doesn't Kill You Makes You Stronger? It's pretty much what we're talking about here. You know, when you join the military, is boot camp easy? No, boot camp is actually very hard, especially if you're going into elite forces like the Navy SEALs or you're trying to be a Marine. The higher the expectation is, the more hell they, point you, they put you through. And why is that? It's because through that fire, the phoenix is born. And through that strife, your future is made. My friends, when Bitcoin and Cardano and Ethereum crashes like this, it's uncomfortable. But no one was ever made great sitting in their comfort zone. I remember in 2017 when Bitcoin hit $20,000 and had a giant correction, and I called the top of that bull market also in the very first video that ever went up on this channel, I said we were overextended. You can go back and sort by oldest and you'll see it. It's a video called, Is Bitcoin Overextended? I made it when Bitcoin's at $8,000. Mm. I needed this YouTube channel to work to help myself and my dad. I needed it to work because it was my way that I was going to change the course of my life. I needed Bitcoin and cryptocurrency to work. And maybe that's something you can relate to. Maybe that's something that you've been through. Maybe you're in a position right now where you need this to work, where you need Bitcoin to make you money so that you can get out of a situation that you find yourself in. Maybe you need this. Maybe you don't just want it. Maybe you need it. I've been there. I've lived that. I needed it. And I can tell you from experience, the thing that made me successful, because I am very successful now, 
is I was able to control my emotions and I worked on myself every single day. It didn't matter what the market was doing. The market can go up, down, sideways, backwards, or purple. I do not care. I worked on me. And I focused on building my skill sets. I focused on building my abilities, and it made me successful. So I encourage you, when Bitcoin and cryptocurrency crashes like this, don't look at the price and worry about it. Worry about how you can make yourself a better version of yourself. Take your future into your own hands, and you will be glad you did. I tell you this not to lecture you, but I tell you this because I love you and because I've been there and because it's what I needed to hear when I was in exactly your position. Let's finish the stream with reading some more Super Chats. Yeah, and smash please. that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. By the way, real quick, we actually have a new sponsor of this channel. It's called Lux Algo. It is a fantastic indicator, and it actually called this correction. So if you sign up with that link down below and use the coupon code JEB, it's capital J-E-B-B, -B, you get 20% off. It's a little bit like market side for some of these other indicators, but I personally think it's the better one of, all, of the bunch. It is being used by a ton of people. You can find that link in the description box down below. It's really useful. I did a video on it, so check that out. All right, so we got to get... Good amount of super chats, but hopefully we'll get them through them pretty quickly. Uh, Jeff, make sure you keep track because when I'm doing this, I can't read if any new ones come up. Mm -hmm. uh, Spencer Nichols said, I'm able to trade on Coinbase Pro and Binance US, FYI. Try those exchanges. Uh, yeah, that's what I think we're seeing. A lot of the exchanges are getting back up. Krista, Krista donated $5 to Smay's Tooth Fund. Oh my uh, gosh. Love you, man. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> Krista, thank you so much. We're gonna, we're, I guess we'll have to give him a $5 bonus. That's uh, funny. From our we will make sure to do that. Um, Tan E. Kayat, I think, uh, says my portfolio is mostly ADA and Zill. What are your What's your take on Zill? Shout out from Singapore. Zillica, not something I've done a lot of research on lately. I'm gonna be honest yeah, with you. It's not one of the ones that we really. It's not one of the ones with, we follow. Uh, but it doesn't mean it's bad. I've seen. I, I've been watching that price. I've seen people make money on it. That's that's the only opinion I have. We had one super chat just come up while you were talking. Uh, just... XRpreneur donated ten dollars. Said, Oof. "So when do you call this correction dip a crash and beginning of a bear market? The bottom is in, the bottom is in the eighteen to twenty two k region for Bitcoin exclamation mark explanation mark market down. Set your buy order for five uh, fifty point five cents on XRP. Uh, Jeb, you. you'll thank me later. Best to you guys. It's possible. Right. It, cool. Yeah." Maybe, maybe, maybe. Uh, uh, Kyle Smith says, my first major crypto investment ever was this morning. As of March 8th, 2020, Black Thursday, this hurts more. Oof. Uh, okay. Isn't it Wednesday? Was the morning of, not this, oh. sorry. Was the morning of March 8th, 2020. Okay, I see what you're saying. Mm. Yes. You bought in at a good time, my friend. Yeah. And by the way, if you're feeling the pain from this, you're still up 1,000%. That would take you 25, uh, what, 15 years in the stock market, so... Count your blessings on that one. Yeah. <laughs> Keep your eyes on the prize and your head in the sky and everything will be just fine. Carlos Diaza says, what do you think about Anchor? I think we talked about that yesterday. Did, uh, you can just repeat what you said about Anchor yesterday. I don't remember what I said about so Anchor. We, we, talked we, about Anchor we, we, made a, we made a joke about Anchor. <laughs> we made a joke about it and then didn't answer the, person, it's the person's like, question. I think it's similar to the Zill. It's just not one that we It's just not one on my yeah. radar, to be honest with you. Yep. Uh, Vanessa Vermont said, if you had enough to buy one Ethereum or some Bitcoin, which one would you get? Depends on your portfolio split. If you have less than 50% of your portfolio in Bitcoin, I would get there, and then you can do whatever you want with the altcoins. I always encourage people to have at least half of their portfolio in Bitcoin, simply because Bitcoin is tackling the largest problem and has the best solution to any of those problems in the crypto space. Yeah. I think it is the best of all of the cryptocurrencies, even though Ethereum and Cardano and some of these others are fantastic projects. I think Bitcoin will, in eventuality, be worth more, and you're not going to want to miss out on that. So mm -hmm. I would follow that train of thought, and then the exact distribution you're going to have to come up with on your own. That's not mine to do. That is uh, something you guys have to think about on your own. Yeah, one that just popped up in chat. I don't want to miss it. John David uh, John. John David John. Hold Bitcoin. Don't buy Tesla. Short Tesla. Kill Tesla. Ooh, that's rough. Mm. Uh, tell us how you really feel. <laughs> um, <laughs> Kyle, like Kyle Leatherman said, would you take profits from Ethereum and put to Bitcoin? I think we answered this before, mm -hmm. so he must have just missed the answer. Yeah, like I said, uh, right now we have a hurricane overhead, and the last thing we want to do is go outside and try and put more boards up over our windows. Yeah. Stay in the freaking cellar. You know, like now is not the time to go out and try and put more boards up on your house. Now is not the time to say, oh, my gosh, I forgot to cover up my plants. I better go outside and do that while there's 120 mile an hour winds. That is not what you ought to be doing right now. Keep yourself safe. Don't touch it. Wait for Bitcoin to cool down. Yep. When they just popped up in chat, you don't want to miss it. Uh, Rohi, I don't know. Rohi. Uh, says, uh, what's your thoughts on Harmony as a project long term? It is around the levels that it was a week oh, ago. Oh, gosh. We did analysis on several times on Harmony 1, and I don't remember. It's what... an interesting project. Is it? What yeah. do you know about it? Uh, so I don't know the exact details of all the fundamentals, but I'm saying uh, 
the the attention around it. Uh, okay, man, I it's a it's a Ethereum token, is it not? I think so. Yes. Um, and, yeah, I was. Gonna and say- it is. It is of it. Man, I was just talking with our, our yesterday talking with our head of uh, research about it. I believe he actually might have a report on it somewhere if you want to dig for that. But we I, just might... did TA on it yesterday, guys. It, there's did a timestamp on oh, we did? yesterday's wow, stream. I have no memory. You can go to, uh, yeah, these days go to yesterday's together. stream and you'll see yep. Harmony One. Yep. Uh, someone just said, I'm getting wrecked. This is David Breeze. I'm getting wrecked. I bought BNB at 600 right before the news came out. Any thoughts on this coin? Oof. Oh, man. Oh, boy. Sorry, this dude. is why we be careful about tops, guys. I, I will leave you with this because we're going to have to wrap out the stream and go over price predictions, which is going to be a nightmare. We're all going to look stupid. But, um, yeah, uh, here's the thing. Whenever the RSI is very high, you don't buy. Let me run that by you again because that's alliterate or it rhymes and something you can remember. When the RSI is very high, you don't buy. I just came up with that, but I'm going to remember that because that's useful. The RSI on Binance coin was massively overextended. It was it was much higher than it needed to be. It needed a correction. We've been talking about on this channel, so this is a good reason to subscribe, about how the market was inflated and how it needed to be popped and how it needed to correct. I've been trying to be delicate with that because everybody hates me when I say that, but we have been saying it. Um, what to do in that situation? Honestly, I think Binance coin is a good hold. Uh, in, in those cases, you have two decisions. You can either cut your losses and sell at a loss, or you can just ride it out. Binance coin, I think, is a pretty decent coin. That is one that you might want to hold. I'm not going to give you any advice on that. I don't know your situation, but yeah, that is hard. Yeah, we, we, have a, we literally have just like a couple more. Okay. One that just popped up, can you time out the anti-vaxxer? Uh, do you have someone spamming anti-vaccine info on your stream? I'm called for. Yes, uh, th- th- did that. We, there's been a lot of chat today, so if you can find that, Smay. I did it. Uh, Smay yeah, did. absolutely. Uh, real quick, last three I have saved. So I'm going to try to get these as quick as possible. Oh, that one's... Uh, let me let me do that one last. 40% pullbacks are normal, not 50%. Bull run is over, says Fred E. Well, uh, look at March of 20... of. Um, <laughs> look at March of last year when Bitcoin pulled back 70% and 50% in a day and then rallied... 2,000% in the next 12 months. Uh, can't say I agree with you on that one. <laughs> uh, Ignacio says, sold off some ADA close to the top and bought the dip today. Would never thought would ne- would have never thought about collecting profit until you mentioned it. Love the streams. All right, Good deal. Great. Awesome. Good for you, man. Cool. And the last one, which I thought was interesting, but I didn't want to just breeze over it. Anna Lynn says, can you explain a bear market and is this the best time to buy crypto and does it always last four years? Mm. Uh, so well, that's well. three questions. Does it, lot, I'll start yes. with the easy one. Does it always last four years? No. Bear markets can last two months. They can last 10 years. It really just depends. There's not a time frame on it. Generally speaking, you'll actually learn this in this book on uh, technical analysis of stock trends. They tend to last somewhere on the order of 18 months, depending on the market you're in. But no, they certainly don't always last four years. Normally speaking, normally in the cryptocurrency markets, since this is a growing space, the bull markets last longer than the bear markets. What was the rest of that question? Yeah, I, I purposely didn't delete it after saying that. Yeah, I know, uh, compl- seriously. Okay, explain, the, uh, explain the bear market. Is this the best time to buy crypto, and does it always last four years? Yes, so is this the best time to buy crypto? I think it's a fantastic time to buy crypto. Yeah. If you have an answer to these two questions, what's your risk tolerance and what's your time horizon? I always ask you guys those questions. That's a question that you have to answer for yourself. How much risk are you willing to take, and how long are you planning on yeah. being in crypto? Think about that, and that's going to help you lead yeah, to your the, answer. The only way to know the answer to is this the best time is to have hindsight. You know, like Which that's, we that's, don't have. We, we will not but have access in to my, until tomorrow. But in, in my yeah. opinion, I can tell you that I think now is a pretty good time. Yeah. But uh, yep. if you're planning on holding it for a long time, the next week, God only knows what's going to happen. We might be at 60000 a week from now. We might be at 25000 a week from now. It's really hard to tell. We'll have some more certainty as the market develops. Yes. Last one that just popped up, and then we are done with Super Chats for the day. Faded Polo says, do not buy Bitcoin. Dip, RIP, RIP. Bitcoin by XRP. Mm. Thank you for the opinion. I do not share it, but thank you so much. <laughs> uh, so, real quick... Uh, for those of you who have been chiming in, we do a price prediction that is uh, probably nowhere close. Although mine, oh my god, mine can be somewhat close. I don't know. A Bitcoin could rally and then take me out of it completely. But Cardano, Smay said things are gonna be two dollars on Friday. Jeb thinks two dollars and thirty cents. I <sighs> said two twenty. Goodness gracious. Smay's vote looks pretty good right now. Uh, but that being said, which is one of my Dogecoin, which I saw a lot left of. Uh, We'll see. Anything's possible, with, especially in Cardano. Ethereum, Smay says three thousand. Jeb says thirty eight hundred, and I said thirty two hundred. Again, Smay's looking kind of pretty there, but it's anything still is possible. Not even close though, uh, Bit- I think it might be close. I think Bitcoin, or Ethereum could rally back there. Last one, Bitcoin. Smay said forty thousand. Jeb says forty six thousand five hundred, and I said thirty eight thousand. While I'm sitting in the lead, I did not expect it to drop this low. I expected it to drop below thirty eight thousand. Did not think it was going to drop below thirty thousand. 
So either I'm sitting really nice, or even maybe this is about to spark a fat rally that will send it up even above Jeb's prediction. By Friday? We'll I don't know. I you, doubt that. I told y'all on Monday yeah. when we made these predictions that I thought my prediction was too early. So if we'll see what happens the in the next couple weeks. If you look at the chart from 2017, it's possible. Yeah, well, it's possible. It's Someone, possible. Um, I'll wrap out with this. George K said, I remember Jeb saying the exact same words that we just said in this stream during the $3,500 crash when the pandemic started, and he was right to be calm. Nothing has changed. And that'll lead me into my final point of this stream, guys. What has fundamentally shifted? China bans Bitcoin. They've done that a billion times. That is nothing new. India is actually looking like they're going to try and unban cryptocurrency. That's good news. Nothing has changed. Only the price has changed. So I encourage you not to get too worried about the price because the price is downstream from the fundamentals and the fundamentals are exactly, exactly the same. Guys, remember, if you are interested, sign up for the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy. The link's in the description box down below. That is a fantastic place to learn technical analysis. Drop a one in chat if you love CT2A. Make sure to sign up for Bybit. It is an affiliate program that we offer. It is a fantastic exchange. And when you sign up for it, you're helping to support our channel. You have great, great user interface over there. Lots of liquidity. Great customer service if you need it and it's going to be a fantastic le uh, leverage trading platform that you're able to grow in your cryptocurrency experience with and you can also sign up for Lux Algo which is one of our indicator affiliates linked in the description box down below guys we vet our indicator excuse me we vet yeah. our affiliates very very well and I'm very happy with what we have here guys if you enjoyed today's stream like the video and also consider subscribing to the channel we're quickly turning into one of the fastest growing channels in crypto and I am so very thankful to all of our subscribers who have joined recently I will be on around the blockchain tomorrow and I have a great video coming out for you at 2 p.m. today. You're not going to want to miss it, so make sure you hit that post notification bell for that. If there's nothing else, we're going to go ahead and wrap it out. Guys, that is going to do it for today's video. Before I go, though, I do just first want to thank each and every single last one of you for watching, as always, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace!